Okay. Um, I guess I'm supposed to. Good evening. Welcome to the FY 2020 public hearing on the on the FY 2022 uh, school budget. Um, <clears throat> due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and state of emergency, on March 12th, 2020, Governor Baker issued an executive order temporarily suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. Uh, GL Chapter 30A, Section 20, pursuant to that order, public bodies are temporarily relieved from the open meeting law's requirements that meetings be held in public places open and physically accessible to the public, so long as measures are taken to ensure public access to the body's deliberations through adequate alternative means. This meeting will be held and will be accessible to the public via Brockton Community Access, Brockton Public Schools website www.bpsma.org, YouTube and Comcast Channel 98, and 107, uh, 1071 HD. Uh, the public may access this meeting via the following link, www.youtube.com forward slash the Brockton channels. Um, okay. Then, oh, the public can, I don't know if that was there before. The public can join this meeting by accessing the link provided um, on the posted agenda, which can be found on the Bro City of Brockton website and Brockton Public Schools website, www.bpsma.org. All right. Um, before we start with the evening's agenda, I know that I'm sure the mayor will uh, also have a moment of silence in our regular meeting uh, later on this evening, but it does not seem, a, it seems like the right thing to do before we conduct any business this evening. Um, that we have a, a moment of silence. Uh, this was a, a really tragic week in Brockton. We lost three young, young lives uh, in our city. And uh, so I'm going to ask first that we have a, uh, a moment of silence for Rafael Andrade, um, as well as Tiago de Pina. Um, as most people are aware, these are two South Middle School students, two cousins that uh, passed away and, and drowned in Fields Park. And, I'll ask that we um, think of their families and pray for their comfort, and, and, and if you'll join me in a, in a moment of silence for, for them. Thank you. Um, also, last Thursday, um, we, we lost Adam Gomes, uh, an our known school student, um, who uh, unfortunately just was involved in a, a tragic uh, accident uh, in, in his backyard. And uh, so, again, we want to just have a moment of silence for, for him and, um, you know, for the uh, uh, comfort of, of his family. And, you know, we offer our condolences to them as well. All right, thank you. Um, okay. So I hereby call this public hearing to order. Um, do we have any visitors? Okay. So we do not have any visitors either outside or on Zoom that wish to be heard. Um, so uh, I'll check again before we adjourn the, the hearing, but uh, with that, is there any discussion or comment? Uh, from the committee before we Anybody have any comment or discussion on this? Okay, seeing none hmm? Yeah, where this is the the school budget hearing um, Okay, so seeing no comment from the members of the committee um, You know and I do want to just confirm again that uh, that we don't have any visitors on zoom or outside we don't have any any public, you know, members of the public that wish to be heard. Okay, one second. All right, ice here. One. Melinda. No one outside. You're checking on that. Okay. All right, um, Judy. Why don't you go ahead while while she confirms? I just wanted to make a, um, a comment on the school budget. This is the first year 
that we've been able to have, you know, money to do some of the things that we want to get done, which we haven't been able to do over the years. So the public understands that there really wasn't any money that we could do these extra things with. And sometimes I think the schools take, you know, a lot from the public about the budget and things. And um, I know there's a lot of talk about the new Brockton, you know, doing over the Brockton High. And those things have to all go through the state. So we are working on that and among other things. So um, I'm very thankful that this year we have this excess money to, you know, get the things done that we want to get done. Thank you very much. Mr. Minicello. Further um, comment on Ms. Mrs. Sullivan's comments. This, again, this is the first year that we've had the um, benefit of a generous increase by the state to our budget, and that, um, and that was able to take place due to the hard work of many Brocktonians, um, as well as our state delegation, uh, mayors present, mayors past, Mayor Carpenter, Mayor Rodriguez, certainly currently Mayor Sullivan. I have to remind myself there are three Sullivans in, 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 with this <laughs> board. Um, and certainly our state delegation, as you've mentioned several times, um, uh, current Superintendent Thomas, uh, past Superintendent Kathy Smith, the administrative team, absolutely all of them, um, you know, Aldo Petronio, um, June Sabo Maguire, who every budget that uh, we were short would always suggest to us, you know, there are things that, you know, the system needs, and she never would stop suggesting them, and we never want those suggestions to ever stop. But um, this year, fortunately, we have extra funding to put in, in place many uh, programs that were reduced, taken away. Now we need to expand. The state certainly is going to be over, over our shoulder making sure that what we're spending the money on is going to produce results, academic, educational results. Uh, the issues listed in the state report that, uh, again, at the time, they had no problem commenting but not providing the funding to address those items, but now you know, they're going to certainly want results now that we have funding to do so. Um, so this, this is a good day. This is a good day for Brockton. This is a good day for the students, the community, the Brockton Public Schools, all of us who have uh, fought the fight, um, you know, several years, uh, several years. Um, so this is, this is definitely a great budget. Um, you know, we, this is one of the rare opportunities. We don't have a, um, an audience full of unhappy employees receiving RIF notices. Um, we have happy employees who, you know, see that uh, the school committee and, and, and the administration is working for the best interest of, of the system, for the students, the parents, the, the employees. You know, as a community, we, um, you know, we, we, we now, this, you know, are able to bring about some new positions, positions that uh, people are happy about, positions that deal with, you know, funding of, of extras with regard to curriculum, programming, more, uh, more uh, positions to support, you know, student learning, um, positions to support uh, diversity, positions to, you know, uh, you know, basically, you know, talk the talk, but we're walking the walk. And, and for years, we've been uh, trying to address, you know, the criticism, I will say, about, you know, the uh, student body looking one way and staff looking another way. But, um, you know, you have to have the people out there and you have to have the resources to be able to hire people and you have to be able to retain new employees because, as we know, the new employees are the first ones to have to leave based on contracts. And, I, and my friend next to me working for the Boston Public Schools knows all about contracts with unions and riffing and all that good stuff. So, I mean, you know, we are lucky from the hard work to have pushed the state in the right direction. And uh, again, this is, a, this is a good day for the Brockton Public Schools. And as Ms. Mrs. Sullivan said, We've already taken the steps of bringing forth the renovation of this high school. 
It's a step-by-step -step process. The wheels have already been in place. We've voted, this, this committee has voted to apply to the MSBA, uh, Massachusetts State Building Association, for that renovation, which has to progress in the orderly fashion. You do not jump the line. And uh, it, it will happen. It's just a matter of the process taking its ordinary course through the funding system. It's like when we were kids. Uh, that schoolhouse rock, uh, a bill be finally becomes a law. All the processes that go into it, uh, you know, I'm just a bill sitting on Capitol Hill, but, uh, and it sits there and goes through committee and goes through committee and goes through committee, and finally at the end, guess what, you're a law. Well, guess what, you know, it will, this, this funding bill will go through the process, and at the end, this place will be updated and upgraded, but we have started that process, so. So um, again, step by step, but the commitment that this committee and the community expect and we will follow through and we have placed everything in the proper progression. So a good day. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Vice Chair and Mr. Superintendent. No problem. Um, anyone else? Mr. Sullivan, I think, yep, go ahead. Yeah, <clears throat> I just wanted to thank this committee for all the work they put in. And just to echo Judy and Tom, this is the best budget I've had since I've been here. And it wasn't easy, you know, to put this whole thing in place, to get all the programs back, the art, the music, all the sports are back, middle school, high school, the busing. We're gonna start our own bus company. I mean, it's, it's almost unbelievable. But I, I know Mike Thomas has done a great job, as well as Aldo Petronio, he's over here. Uh, they seem to pull money out of the hat where it, where it isn't. But I just wanted to repeat it again, that the money will not be spent foolishly. We, we go through the budgets, line by line by line, to put the money in the right places. And just so the people know, that we're bringing everything back that was been cut over the years. And I just wanted to thank everybody here. Thanks for the great job. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Um, then I will uh, kind of close out the discussion or comment part of this with some comments of my own. Um, I obviously want to join uh, the comments of my, of my colleagues, um, you know, and uh, there's a lot of work ahead. Um, and uh, I think that the district, I know the district is up to the challenges that are ahead of it. Um, and you know, it's great to have the additional funding that we have, but what's most important is that we use it in a way that's gonna drive student achievement. And I think we've done that. I think we've been very, very strategic. The superintendent has been very strategic, partnering with us as a committee and allocating the funds to the best places where we'll see um, you know, the students will see it different and we'll see a difference and we'll see a benefit. Um, you know, and I know that, you know, and Mr. Minicello has referenced this a few times, you know, we've got uh, the unfortunate review and, you know, um, I, I, we've talked about this in the past. Yeah, of course things weren't, didn't go well. You had, we had to cut programs and cut staff and increase class sizes and, you know, I, I feel your frustration of what they think was going to happen, you know. Um, so, but upward and onward, that is the past is the past, and we're looking forward. And uh, we're, I know I'm happy to have the finally have the the, the funding that we're getting, and um, you know I think this is again a budget that has been done in a very strategic way um, to make sure that um, the ultimate goal of student achievement is going to be accomplished with the way that we've used these funds and the way that we'll continue to use additional funds as they come in in future years because the Student Opportunity Act, remember, was a, a uh, originally a seven-year rollout, which of course COVID kind of messed that up, but um, so there's, you know, hopefully in future years we'll have more opportunities to bring in, um, you know, great programming that will really help with student achievement and make a big difference for our kids and um, you know, again, because the whole idea of ed reform back in the 90s was your zip code shouldn't dictate the quality of your education. 
Um, and I, I know we all firmly believe in that in this city and on this committee. So, and I do want to, again, <laughs> echoing Mr. Minicello's comments, there were a lot of people involved in the fight. But basically, anybody who had a, a, a dog in the fight, i.e. was a resident of the city, had kids in the district, was on this committee, was in any, you know, uh, elected or leadership role, was a part of that fight. And, you know, uh, when we work as a team, we get things done. So, okay. Um, again, we don't have any members of the public that wish to comment. Um, just, and I don't think that I need to do this because we're not, you don't take any votes in a public hearing, but I'm going to do it for the purpose of belts and suspenders. Um, for lack of a, a better way to put it. <clears throat> and that is a, a roll call to just uh, establish a quorum. Um, so just to, again, for the purpose of belts and suspenders on this, I'll go ahead and do that. Um, Mayor Sullivan, Mr. D'Agostino is here, Ms. Asak, Mrs. Mendez. Here. Mr. Minicello. Here. Mr. Rodriguez. Here. Mrs. Sullivan. Yeah. Mr. Sullivan. Here. Okay. So we did have a quorum present for this public hearing. Um, if there's no further comment, again, we have no members of the public that wish to be heard. Um, I'm going to adjourn this public hearing on the FY 2022 budget. And again, I don't know that we